Hello my friends and welcome, firstly let's go and review the Frontlines update. We have those and today we have the awesome news about Klishivka, which is on the southern part from the Bakhmut city. Ukraine gained some of the territories in that area and it's been confirmed that Russians are absent on the very important heights over there. Let's check out the update yesterday and today. Ukraine has advanced towards the Klishivka itself. You can see that the battle isn't going for the streets within the village. Hopefully this week we're gonna liberate this village. Russia started to share the video how they demolished the Ukrainian position saying that they've took the very important heights those hills back, but it's not true. The video is outdated for around two weeks. Yes, Ukrainians tried to get those hills before and few of the soldiers unfortunately were trapped on the top of the hills. Russia used artillery and mortars to target the Ukrainian positions on the top. So yes, unfortunately we have losses because of this operation ongoing. But still, the Ukrainian side has much less losses compared to the Russian side, even though Ukraine performs the offensive action in this area. So hopefully we're gonna liberate Klushivka very, very soon. Let's speak about Berhivka, because there is also the movement of Ukrainian armed forces here in this perimeter. The armed forces of Ukraine took this part of the forest line, so little by little they go towards the Yahine. Yahine is very important, as well as Berhivka. We need to get those under control to move forward to Krasnohara and try to encircle the Bakhmut city itself. Also, there is the light movement in this place, so yesterday, today, not a significant move maybe just 50 meters gained but it's also kind of important for this small part of the front line unfortunately it's very hard to propel for ukrainian army russia this time got ready for our action let's go on the south there is just the front line correction so near to novodonetsk it was yesterday it is today i think that deep state map resource just obtained the current information about the situation so it's not the offensive action from ukrainian army that was today however we have the significant news about odessa port and the russian response on the kirch bridge attack before we go to it let me tell you about the partner and also the sponsor of my channel the atlas vpn they created a special deal for my followers where you can get the atlas vpn premium for just 170 per month plus six months for free. That's the best offer that you can potentially get on the market from all of the premium VPN services. First of all, I do care about my security because Atlas VPN has a special design data breach monitoring system. If I have the Atlas VPN warning, then someone tries to reach my device, I switch off the public Wi-Fi. Atlas also has awesome feature of the multiple devices support from the single account. So I use Atlas VPN on my iPhone, laptop, and iPad. I always keep it on to make sure that my devices are protected. Then I have some free time, I would like to watch my favorite series on the Netflix platform. So not only Atlas VPN gives me the permission to access any kind of series in my country which are blocked or not blocked, but it gives me fantastic streaming speed. And now my friends, please check out my personal link in the video description just below, where you can get the Atlas VPN Premium for just 170 per month, Plus, you'll have six months for free. It is the outstanding offer with a huge discount, so I highly recommend you to get it. All right, about Odessa, let's go closer to the city and let's switch to the satellite map. I just want to show you where Russia is aiming their rockets and drones nowadays. So two days ago, they responded for the Kerch Bridge attack by targeting the hotel of this port. There is the passenger terminal, the hotel and the church. I told you about this attack yesterday, so Russia damaged those facilities. However, the last night Russia targeted more facilities in Odessa. By the way, this is the new Odessa airfield, there's the new runway, I used to fly there a lot. So there are some port facilities on the south that are used to handle the grains. And some of the grain storages unfortunately were targeted. 
This time Ukrainian air defense shut down just 50% of all of the drones and the rockets that Russia launched on the port facilities. Why did it happen? Because I think that Ukraine wasn't really expecting that move from the Russian side. President Zelensky already ordered to move more air defense systems to this place. I think that this should have been done before. There are also some other port facilities in Odessa and I believe that this part was also targeted this one or that one, those are the oil reservoirs and as it was reported, there was the significant fire. Unfortunately, Russia tries to eliminate the grain deal by targeting the Ukrainian ports, not the ships that go to those ports. However, today we got the information from the boat radar that some of the ships are going to Odessa ports. One of the ships is registered in Cameron. But Russia already announced that they will drown all of the ships that would go to Odessa or other Ukrainian ports because they think that those ships could be used to carry weaponry. Instead, Russia wants to leave the sanctions on some of their agricultural products, plus they want to connect two of their important banks back to the SWIFT. I think that our allies wouldn't agree on the Russian conditions. You may say that in that case many of the African countries will have the problems with the food supplies. I would agree with you, but the main customer for the Ukrainian grain is China. We have the statistics over here, so Ukraine the last time produced almost 33 million tons of the grains, I think it's for the last year. So China with 8 million tons of the grains is the biggest Ukrainian customer. President Zelensky today announced that the part of the terminal which was hit by the Russian airstrike was full of the grains that should have been sent to the China. 60,000 tons of the grains were attacked today by the Russian aggressor state. Where is the reaction from China? Just three days ago they say that the grain deal should be continued, but now they are silent. Ukraine responded on the Russian attacks by launching their own one towards Crimea again. This time the target wasn't the Kerch Bridge, but the biggest Russian ammunition warehouse in Crimea. This depot was attacked this morning, but the detonation still continues. Russia had to close their very important road that leads from the Kerch city to Sevastopol. Also, they had to evacuate some of the villages around, but no civilians were injured, just maybe the Russian military. The kaboom over there was really big, Russia accumulated many of the bombs and rockets in that area. Alright, so Putin is really a coward. No news here, but Peskov and the Russian Foreign Ministry said many times that Putin will go personally to the South Africa for the BRICS summit. But today, the President of South Africa said said that Vladimir Putin will not attend the summit. The Russian Federation will be presented by the Foreign Minister Lavrov. The last week, South African officials asked Russia many times not to send Putin to their territory, otherwise they would have to arrest him. Because the South Africa is the country that introduced the Rome Statute. So they have to execute the warrant. The word execute is very interesting here. About the Wagner army, already eight convoys of Wagner soldiers were sent to Belarus camps. Prigozhin today addressed towards the soldiers in the camp saying that it's just the beginning of the Wagner mission. They will train the Belarus soldiers, making them the second army in the world. He actually said like that. After it, they will send some of the Wagner soldiers to Africa and maybe they will again take part in the special military operation that Russia started more than one and a half years ago. But he also said that the current military operation that Russian army performs is total shame and Wagner will not take part in that. I think that as far as Shoigu is leading the Russian army, Wagner will not return to the fight scene. The United States of America agreed the new military support package for Ukraine. This is the very important one, four of the NASAM's air defense systems. And munitions for them, that's awesome. Also what is important for offensive action is the mine cleaning equipment. And quite a big number of the fuel tracks, 150 fuel tracks. We need them a lot, but those are mostly used for the offensive operations. Also, the record number of the tactical vehicles that are used to handle the equipment on the front line. Plus the artillery shells, drones, precision aerial munitions, I think it's the best package that we ever had. Hopefully it arrives as soon as possible. 
By the way, Russia continued to use the cluster munitions shells on the Ukrainian territory. For example, this is the Ha-58 rocket. It has the cluster shells inside. This rocket was shot down in the skies over Ukraine. I got the information about the Turkey potential military support to Ukraine. They have plans to supply Ukraine with about 180 Bayraktars TB2 UAVs, 100 small Bayraktars and many of the shells. Well, this information is mostly found on Twitter and some of the Telegram channels. There was even the link to original resource. I checked it, it was there, but finally it disappeared. So even though I like those news, but unfortunately they look like fake. I have the question for you, my friends, because I'm not the military expert. The question is about the landing operation of Ukrainian armed forces across the Antonovsky Bridge. As you can see, we still hold the territory near to the bridge construction, but Ukrainian army doesn't move forward, maybe because our guys are still waiting for the resources to get the nearby towns and villages under control to cut the important supply road for the Russian army, but they are mostly at the same place for already one month, and Russia uses heavy artillery and some of the missiles to target the positions of our soldiers. So the question is very simple. What's the purpose of this mission as you think? Because for example, as you can see today, Russia launched the big attack on this area before they targeted the bridge construction. It was crushed and obviously we have the losses over there. Maybe this operation is done to distract the attention of the Russian army for them to keep the units in Kherson region and not to send them to Zaporizhia. Speaking about the big Ukrainian advancement without the bridge and the constant supply line across the Dnepr river, it's basically not possible to advance with large forces. However, we still may use amphibious and many more infantry to try to get the local towns under control, as I say to you. So I'm waiting for your comments regarding this situation across the Antonovsky Bridge. All right, so here is the latest statistics of the losses for three consecutive days from the Oryx resource. Russia lost totally 68 units, Ukraine lost 17 of the units. What's interesting here, probably you will not see it under my picture, that Russia lost 18 of BMP-1 vehicles. That is probably the record number for the three days. As for Ukraine, unfortunately, it's been confirmed that we lost Bayraktar TB2. Ukraine lost one of the tanks, Russia lost 10. And today I saw the video how Russia lost T90, also because of the FPV drone attack. Well, most of the losses, according to these statistics, goes for the armored vehicles. Ukraine continued to use the gliding bombs to destroy the Russian command headquarters. For example, today it happened in Skadovsk. I was able to find this video on the Russian resources at first and they were very sad and angry that they lost their command. Russia definitely have the problems with their officers. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. Don't forget to press the like to this video and also don't forget to check my personal link in the video description just below where you may find the link to the Atlas VPN Premium with a great discount. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.